on machine learning using Python. In this tutorial we are going to get more practical away from the theory as in the previous tutorials and this time we are going to use Kaggle platform which is a competition platform for machine learning. There are mainly two types of uh, competitions. There is a knowledge competition where you practice your own machine learning uh, knowledge and then there is a competition for a prize or a competition for recruitment and both are good uh, opportunities for any good machine learning engineer to get some exposure and even get a job at a renowned machine learning house. So it's a platform that every good machine learning engineer should be on and this tutorial will help you get started. We shall start with the very basic competition of Titanic where, where you are going to find out who is going to survive, who is going not to survive. As you can see the data is available on the platform in three files. You have a training file where you have got some of the samples uh, and their own features and you have got the testing file. This is the testing set where you are going to apply your prediction algorithm and submit the results. The submissions should follow the format in the gender submission.csv file. So what kind of data are available? There are a few features available. Some are categorical, some are numerical. So you have to do some pre-processing and uh, data exploration to find out which features are going to help you the most. For example, the survival is the target or the response variable where you are going to predict whether he is surviving, that is 1 for yes or 0 for no. And the ticket class, that is 1 for first class, 2 for second class and 3 and so on for the rest of the features. You can read more through the Kaggle website for this competition. So I've submitted some kernels and I'll let the kernels run on the platform and I'll show you how to do that just uh, shortly and then afterwards you have the option to make your code private or public for the purpose of this tutorial the code was made public through my submission uh, website so we discover the code on the GitLab which is also a public repository for the same tutorial the link will be attached in the video description on YouTube we have achieved through this tutorial a training accuracy of 84% validation accuracy 81% and finally a testing accuracy of 79.99 on the Kaggle submission. So we start with the data exploration as usual. We import the necessary libraries, uh, mainly pandas, h5py, scikit-learn preprocessing. We define a couple of lambda functions that help us convert that categorical data to numerical data. For example, given a value for male or female, we return 1 for male, 0 for female and uh, giving the value for the embarking where the passenger land uh, embarked on the Titanic. Uh, for C, we get the value 2, Q, 1 and S, we return 0. Here is a def uh, method that takes a file uh, path on the desk and then starts converting it to a pandas data frame. Here for shuffling the data we use sampling method from pandas that return a random sample at every time we run the algorithm and here we say the fraction equals 1 that means we are not discarding any of the samples in the training set. Reset endings uh, prevents the pandas from creating a new column after shuffling the data with the old index. So be careful when you are applying these uh, methods because everything has its own side effect and should be aware of. Then we start with uh, uh, handling the missing data. We found out uh, through the data exploration that some uh, columns don't ha have NaN or not a number of values. So we started with filling the edge with the uh, fill not available data with a median. The median is more realistic than the mean because it tells you uh, for example, if we have a data of the billionaires in the world, some will the, the mean will be uh, skewed towards a higher value, but the median will be just in the middle. So we replace the edge value with the median. Then we convert the categorical data for sex and imparked through the lambda functions defined earlier. 
Finally, we apply normalization and let's say uh, explain something about this uh, pre-processing function because I have applied L2 regularization or norm on this uh, data. I have applied the uh, normalization between 0 and 1, but I found the minimum maximum scalar to be the most realistic for this uh, tutorial. So we here uh, create a new object of uh, the class minimum maximum scalar. Then we fit uh, the uh, the column data through the scalar and transform it all in one shot using fit transform API. Just for uh, completeness, uh, please note that we have a reshape function here that transforms the matrix so that uh, the transpose is used as the fit transform expects a two-dimensional matrix not just one column or one array of data applying some correlation and covariance to the data using pandas correlation function and pandas covariance function to find the most relevant uh, columns or features that affect the response or the target value I've come up with this uh, set of features that really uh, affects the prediction and then I've split it into a response variable and a x or a features variable and returned the both of them. Here is the wrapper for the method. It just calls the pre-processed data on the file available or we which we have downloaded from the Kaggle platform for data section and then we get the training size here we are using 80% of the data for training and 20% for validation I've tried uh, with different values and found this to be quite optimal for this tutorial finally this step I find optional but uh, it's a good opportunity to discover the h5 by a library which helps compress large data formats into smaller ones so I believe that by compressing the data to H5 by uh, format, we are going uh, to have the training running faster than usual instead of running it directly on the pandas. So this was the file for pre-processing the data. Afterwards, we have a dataset.h5 file output uh, on the desk. You can see here that I have version 4, that means I have run the algorithm on many different uh, uh, combinations to get the optimal one which gives the best performance. Next, we are going to explore our model before diving into the training uh, script for which uh, So here we have a file called build model So we are using Keras for this tutorial, which I find a very high level API built on top of TensorFlow. You can even run it on MXNet or Cafe or Tiano. So uh, TensorFlow is Keras, uh, I find uh, a good combination, very easy to prototype uh, ideas, to find the best one. So I encourage you to use Keras over other libraries. I have uh, done the previous tutorials using PyTorch. So this one we are we have we are exploring Keras. We import the sequential uh, module from Keras models, and the layers we import the dense layer, the dropout layer, activation layer, and Likerelu. So here how we start by building our model. So we have two dense layers or feedforward layers, and then we are applying dropout for regularization to avoid overfitting. I've played with the dropout uh, fractions. I found 0.2 for the first one and 0.1 for the second one to be quite optimal. And then so the activation function is a leaky relu, which is uh, a little bit different uh, from the relu, is that uh, for the values below zero, it adds a fraction, a small fraction, 0.1 or 10% of the value, and instead of discarding it completely, you can play around with other values like tench or. Uh, or sigmoid or other activation function available on uh, Keras uh, activation. I found this uh, configuration to be quite optimal. You can always play around with the values and the parameters to get uh, an even more optimal uh, setup. So uh, having this two dense layer, uh, we have finally a final one uh, output layer which outputs a single value using sigmoid for binary classification 
you could have uh, discarded the sigmoid and just used the output value but uh, this works uh, good as well let's discover the training script which is available over here as stated earlier all this, uh, all this source code is publicly available either on GitLab or on the kernels on Kaggle so now uh, having explored the data having built our model the training script is going to be very simple first we are going to create a, di a directory if it doesn't exist we are having a method define data reader which reads uh, the data from the h5 uh, file and uh, having them as numpy finally uh, we have the training subroutine it uh, starts with initializing the model and then the optimizer is you can play around with the learning rate I find uh, uh, 0.001 uh, 0 to be quite good not very high not very low and then with learning rate decay as a, a validation accuracy plateaus so that it doesn't go springing up and down uh, away from the look from the global minima and then the momentum I usually set it to a high value above 0 0.5 0 0.9 worked here just fine then we compile the model using the loss function of mean square error and then we have the you can play around with other uh, loss functions as well and then we have our metric uh, which is the accuracy of the on the validation set the data reader will return the training and the validation uh, features and labels as well we create the directory for saving the checkpoints and it's just one line of code using keras to do all of the heavy lifting for you you pass the training data, the training labels, the batch size, you can play around with different values depending on the size of your uh, RAM and then the validation data, the number of epochs and then some callback functions for logging and checkpoint saving it logs uh, uh, to a file using logs.csv and the checkpoints are saved to directory weights which we have created above and it has this format with the epoch number, the validation accuracy and the validation loss note that it saves this file also in HDF5 uh, format it monitors the validation accuracy to adjust its parameters internally and its mode is minimizing the uh, loss function and we call the train from outside the function let's get back to the final testing uh, routines so having trained our model output the best accuracy of course you can see a demo of that or if you run the code through the kernel or, or even through your machines it doesn't require so much uh, CPU power or uh, RAM since the deficit is not very huge here we have got the our helper functions defined once again for better practice this could have been uh, out uh, saved in a different file and imported the file so that we don't have to repeat the code but when you are working quickly something like this uh, is normal to happen then we read the testing data apply the missing data sub uh, substitution for the testing data we have found also that the fair is also uh, got some uh, missing values so we uh, replaced it with the median have converted the data from categorical to numerical for section and parquet normalize the data using minimum maximum scalar having our features or the columns which we are going to run our algorithm on converted that to an umpy array given the initialized the model and loaded the saved weights through the checkpoints for the best accuracy here this uh, variation or, or version of the code had 79% uh, of validation accuracy you can fine tune the algorithm to give a better accuracy of course and feel free to write to me of any improvements you'd like to discuss finally uh, just one line of code model.predict on the testing features we get the values rounding them I uh, remember we have used a final output layer of sigmoid so the values uh, below 0.5 become 0 above 0.5 become 1 and that's our final prediction 
so we generate the the passenger ID from 892 to 1310 and these are the values uh, required by the Kaggle platform we remember that uh, uh, formatting the output should follow the same uh, formatting uh, prescribed by the uh, competition owners finally we output the file uh, with the passenger ID and the prediction of survived or not survived to a single CSV file usually to submit the data through the kernel the output file should be submission.csv you can run the whole code through the kernel let me see if my code has finished running it hasn't yet but you can see here if you click edit you get a nice IDE on the web editor and you can run an experiment with your code and there is also a beta version using GPU so that to accelerate the training and prediction process Kaggle is a very powerful platform a must-have tool for any machine learning engineer thank you for watching and see you in next tutorials doing more advanced the competitions on Kaggle and wish you the best of luck